Okay, well at this point, um, you know what a gather is. This is sometimes referred to as a common shot gather. We've been referring to this as a shot record, but a common shot gather uh, describes one of the features, which is that all the recordings that you see in a record like this have a common shot. We've been referring to this particular geometrical arrangement of shot and receivers as a symmetrical um, split spread shot record. And th this would be an example of some real data uh, that, that shows the, the different events that you see in the shot record. Now gathers, as you know, are all about redundancy. And uh, we collect common midpoint data to increase the redundancy of measurements and effectively reduce the signal to noise ratio uh, that, we, that we have in our data. We want to get a little bit better signal than we see here in the individual shot record, which remember we would refer to this as a single fold. So we only have one trace per one record per reflection point. So I would ask you, you know, maybe to pause the video and look at this record here. Can you, can you identify all the events that you see in this uh, shot gather or this shot record? So having taken a moment, uh, I think you can see we have what we might classify as a refraction, uh, critical refractions here in the shallow surface. They're, they do appear to increase in velocity with offset, and that may be due to some uh, lateral variation in velocity as we go away from the source. Um, we don't really see much in the way of shallow reflections up here. We do begin to see some nice reflections down here. Now these events are ground roll. And remember ground roll is a generally what we see when we're looking with vertical uh, geophones, uh, ge geophones that respond to the vertical up and down motion of the Earth's surface. We see the, the Rayleigh wave. Rayleigh waves, love waves, they're dispersive and um, we tend to see the higher frequency um, events or the events that uh, move down into some of the deeper higher velocity layers uh, in, the, in the near surface. So they tend to have a little bit higher frequency, they move with higher velocity and we can uh, see, see some of that frequency change a uh, little higher frequency or shorter wavelength here than we do down here. So we can see the dispersion in the Rayleigh waves. We can see the hyperbolic uh, characteristics of the reflection events. So the reflection events are usually what you're after. Usually what all this processing about is about is to get rid of this kind of coherent noise, this kind of coherent noise, and to reduce the influence of the random noise that you can see in the record, which is, is quite variable from trace to trace in the common shot uh, gather. <clears throat> so now over here, we've just taken the common shot gather. We're referring to this as an asymmetrical split spread. So we have an arrangement of geophones or sensors about the source, about each source, which is symmetrical. The arrangement of geophones is symmetrical. We have six on this side, we have six on this side, we have a little bit of a gap here. Uh, and remember that we wanted to get some redundancy in our measurements. And uh, of course, what we're doing here is giving you a bit of a review, so this is kind of redundant in itself, but uh, just just to pull, pull some things, pull some ideas together. Remember that we have this, what, what we could refer to as a stacking chart which shows at this particular reflection point or for a particular midpoint, if you will, that we have a record which provides information about the reflection from this horizontal surface at this point on receiver 11, shot 1, on receiver 9, of shot 2, receiver 7, of shot 3, which we don't have up there. And so we go 11, 9, 7, 6, 4, 2. These are, are the receivers that we would be sorting out, that we would be extracting 
from each shot record. So the shot records would be independent sets of data and we would have to go through the shot records individually and sort out these records 11, 9, 7, 6, 4, and 2 from shots 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 respectively. And then uh, we showed that there were a couple groupings of uh, uh, common midpoints 12, 10, 8, 5, 3, 1, and this 11, 9, 7, 6, 4, 2. So uh, we have to go through our shot data, sort out these records in order to get events which share a common midpoint. So remember, what one of the, th this would be the common midpoint ray tracing. So we can see for shot one, record 11, shot two, record nine, shot three, record seven, and so on. After sorting, after we've pulled all the traces out of each individual shot, when we look at such a gather, common midpoint gather, in time, we can see that the reflection event is indeed a hyperbola. Okay. And then, of course, the next thing that we uh, talked about was this process of stacking. And stacking is the process of normal move-out correction. We have all this information from a common reflection point or something a little bit larger, which we refer to as a Fresnel zone. And uh, this is just an example, another example, using real data of a uh, common midpoint gather. So all the records that you see here, a much, much larger number, uh, share the same, same midpoint, perhaps not the same reflection point. Uh, these layers look fairly, fairly flat, at least as far as I can tell, but they do. Notice that the apex of this hyperbole here is, is tend to come up here a little bit in the middle. So there may be some, uh, maybe, maybe some lateral velocity variations and so on, which are uh, influencing this record, or it just may be a, a function of noise. But we can see a couple of the problems that we want to deal with with the stacking process, which is moving all these begins by the NMO correction and then the stacking process is summing them all together. Now these records are not NMO corrected, but we can see that we have a lot of noise over here that we don't over, don't over here. We can see that we can't see some reflection events here or here as well as we can over here. Okay, so there are differences as we go uh, out to the longer shot receiver uh, records. Uh, Compar in, in comparison to those with a shorter uh, offset. So the process of stacking is going to help us pull out some of these reflection events. And, uh, as we've done here with, a, with some model data, we've just shown some model traces here that have been NMO corrected. We have some noise. And in the process of stacking, we enhance the signal. The signal sums together linearly, so we just get an enhancement of the signal by a factor of n, n traces are a factor of 6 in this case. The noise is enhanced by the square root of n, so we're assuming random noise. It doesn't completely cancel out, however it is diminished by the square root of the number of traces that we sum together. And in this case it's uh, 6, so we would have a square root of 6 uh, enhancement of the or, uh, uh, decrease in the um, amplitude of the noise relative to the signal. The signal increases as, as the number of traces n, the noise is the square root of n, so the signal to noise ratio of n over the square root of n or just square root of n. So we get a square root of n enhancement of signal to noise ratio in the stack trace. And effectively what we've simulated is this normal incidence trace. This would be a right angle here, whether the layer is dipping or not. And it's also sometimes referred to as a coincident source receiver trace. So after stacking, we get one trace. We can represent it by a trace at the location of the midpoint and uh, a trace which um, simply goes down, strikes the surface at right angles and is returned back to the surface. And we will talk about uh, the normal incidence um, coincident source receiver trace in more detail uh, in, a, in another video, uh, upcoming video. So again, all these sources and receivers are grouped together here at this midpoint and uh, then summed together to get the stack trace. Uh, 
which gives us a single event coming in at the T02H over D time. Okay, so here we have uh, just the beginnings of, uh, we're coming back to velocity analysis. We talked a little bit about this uh, previously. Uh, over here you can see some hyperbolic reflection events, one, two, three, four. Here we have a velocity panel, and what has happened here uh, is that these reflection hyperbola have been NMO corrected using different velocities going from 1500 meters per second out to 3500 meters per second in a window. So what we're doing here is we're looking at the, we're looking at a property of the summation of these traces at a particular stacking velocity, uh, which is referred to as semblance. And we'll talk about semblance briefly, but it's just a measure of how well these events, um, you could think of it as, as how well the, the signal to noise ratio has been increased or how well the re relative amplitude of the reflection has been incre increased when all the traces are summed together after NMO correction at these various velocities. And you can see that after NMO correction at around 2,000 meters per second, we get a maximum in the uh, semblance. For this event, we get a maximum in the semblance here, a little bit over uh, 20, 2250, 2250, and, and so on. So we're just seeing kind of a bell-shaped looking curve here, which is a measure of semblance. We have low velocities. We don't get very much in the way of a summation. We begin to increase the velocity. We get a maximum semblance. We decrease that. And we can see that the coherence uh, in the summation falls off uh, to zero. For each of these events, we see something very similar. Now, I don't know why over here in the t squared x squared plot, remember we did talk about t squared x squared, uh, the benefits of a t squared x squared velocity analysis, and, and uh, we're illustrating that here. But the, uh, the authors here, uh, and, and this would be the uh, source that you could refer to, have flipped the uh, time uh, upside down on us. So instead of going from 0 to 2 over here, we're going from 0 to, of course, this is t squared. So we're going from 0 to you know, up, up to 4 or so. So this would be the first reflection event. And you can see that when we plot up the t squared, x squared values here and calculate a best fit line, calculate the velocity, we get a best fit velocity of about 2,000 meters per second. For the second event, 2,264 meters per second. Follow this up here. You can see the maximum in the semblance around 2,264 meters per second. For this event, uh, the best fit, 2,519 meters. So we're looking at this bell curve, this measure of coherence. And we're up here around 20, this would be 2,500, we're a little over 2,500, and so on for event four, up around 2828. So the velocity, so an interpreter would look at these semblance plots here, pick the velocity they want to use, and that might be the peak semblance. And they would then use that velocity to NMO correct and then stack the traces in the gather to get the stack trace. Now, the next time uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about velocity analysis. This has been largely just, just a, a bit of a review or a bit of summary of some ideas that we've run across as we've uh, been discussing shot gathers and common midpoint gathers and velocity analysis. We've already discussed velocity analysis uh, uh, to some degree, and here we're going to be looking at, um, we're going to be continuing on with uh, some further discussion and illustration of the actual process of velocity analysis. So thanks for joining us, and uh, hope to see you next time.